test here. Here's some of the balloon molecules. We're going to have to try and carry these over to the hotel on the bus with all that crap. So it looks like it's rolling. The battery's good. And it's March 25th. Yeah. Hi everybody, thanks for coming and some of you may be here waiting, but um, I just want to share, I try and come up with fun ways of teaching chemistry. So I had a chance to work down at the Vandenberg Space Camp and they had like an unlimited budget and a giant helium tank. And you find nobody can resist a balloon, right? Well. When I hear all this, oh, we need money for chemistry, we need this and that, you can teach so much just with balloons. So when I got here Sunday, we had the, I'm a California local section, they kind of took me under their wing, even as cornball as I am. These are the Berkeley guys, right? Well, we have a hospitality booth, so I talked them into kind of funding for a helium tank and some balloons so I could play around with it the first couple days. Well, green chemistry is the theme of the convention. I've been coming to conventions for 20 years, and just the last five, I've realized there's a theme. Well, then Sunday afternoon, Jacques Cousteau's son gives a talk. So I got really hyped up on the uh, green chemistry and the balloon molecules, especially because they're, since we're playing with helium and that, these are the ones that I say the kids are in the reaction vessel, okay? Because when they're, you know, floating around in that, you're in it. It's not on paper, it's not up on the screen. It's behind you, it's above you, it's below you. So with the Jacques Cousteau thing, I'll just show you some of these ones quick just so we can add a little color to the room here. These were ones we started playing with. Um, rock star, huh? So um, I had the lady that retired from Lawrence Livermore Lab, an environmental chemist, PhD, all that, postdoc. She told me sulfur dioxide was linear. Does anybody know? So I hung it up there linear, and then, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, when I was gone, someone came by and corrected her. So just by having a non-threatening way for people to talk about science is invaluable. So we started making all the little ones. I'll just show you these because they were made pretty quick on the fly, and they've lost all their potential and all that. But say something as simple as carbon dioxide. Now, if a kid makes this, okay, we don't have time to be making all these. But they're blowing them up, and the value of the balloon, we, you can have the size difference and the color coordination. Green, I think, should always, even in the textbooks, because they're mixing all these colors up, green, I think, should always be oxygen. Anybody guess why I would think that? When you do positive, negative stuff, positive, what color is positive usually always? Car batteries, your positive terminal is red, right? So since hydrogen is usually always a proton, red for positive, green for negative. So as I'm going to show you the first one here, when we do the water molecule, the green and the red, positive, negative, it shows the electromagnetic character, the dipole nature. I say water is a magnet. They like to call it an induced dipole magnet. It's a magnet. So with the color coding and the size, these are kind of lost because we've mixed cheap balloons in that. So carbon, ideally, I'd love to be black. Remember the old ball and stick models? They were always black. Well, now they're using green because they love to say organic and that. So the balloon, you got color coding, you can do the sizes, right? So when you got the class doing their ball and stick models, remember how it just kind of gets, you know, it's so tiny and stuff. They're on their desk and, you know, what's, what do you got over there? What if the kids are like way across the room? What is carbon dioxide? You know, it's that. You know, it really, I think, brings their senses. You've got to use all their senses. So more than the kinesthetic of writing that, you've got all these molecules now that your NOs, your NO2s, remember, you can draw the sigma bonds and the little dotted ones, so it's helping them learn their Lewis structures also. And I'm just showing you these quick because these are the complicated ones. You know, I mean, by day three, we had to do all the good ones. Carbon monoxide, right? Triple bonded. So the kids, I think, 
not only just making it, but when they're learning the real bonds and stuff, they'll do this. You know, how many exercises do we go to conferences and we see these great papers, teach us the best stuff, right, when we go back? Kids treat it like it's anything else. You know, they're yawning. So, neon gases, you can just do a single balloon, and then you can start writing the isotope numbers on them and stuff. The only problem with this would be that if you did it in a classroom, the next day they're down on the floor. You know, but still, that's when you don't do something and you're done with it. I mean, look, some of these are three or four days old. So if this was in a school classroom, by day four, who cares? Let them, let them pop them. Let them get a little violent like they want to be, right? But, I mean, doesn't that just kind of make chemistry seem like it's more of a circus atmosphere? Nothing? Okay, so let me show you where this all started. The space shuttle. Everybody knows the orange, big orange tank in the middle of the space shuttle? There's two solid fuel thrusters on the side, but the big orange tank, anybody know what's inside that? It's still your most exothermic reaction for the smallest molecules that there are. There's LOX, they call it, you know, LOX stands for liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Now, which tank do you think is bigger? There's two two predominantly big tanks in that orange tank. We're all chemists, I won't play games with you. H2, right, because we need twice as much of the hydrogen as we do the oxygen. So, I'm at the space camp down there and I'm, I'm thinking, I, I'd already come up with cartoon representations. I did this periodic table thing years ago, but you've all seen water represented as like a Mickey, Mo Mickey Mouse kind of deal in the books, right? Big, big O little ears. Well, I took it a step further and I drew the electrons in because now with the Mickey Mouse, I call him Mickey Mole, water molecule, now he's got negative electrons. And how does water stick together? The negative electrons grab onto the positive ear. Well, we're going to see how simple that is because what you do, and this was my problem, is they had no green good bags, so I had to buy a whole set and do this. We're going to color code water molecules. So the reactants that we have, let's do this. Another thing you get to do in the lab with this, too, this doesn't have to be class time. This is an after-school event. This is something when you got a break or, you know, the lab didn't work or something. This is play time, but watch how much you learn from this. Everybody fills balloons to the top, right, and ties them, and, and what happens when you let go of them? They're gone. Don't fill them all the way. Watch. And one, two, three. Uh, roughly half and half. So the kids are learning, right? Half helium, half your breath. What is in your breath? You guys are still half asleep. So here's something to wake you up. Could you hold it for me? Oh, come on. I tried. See, everybody gets a laugh out of that. But watch this. When somebody grabs it and they go to hand it to you, they go, ew, it's full of spit. Is that spit? I didn't spit in this, right? That's water vapor. And what's the water vapor from your breath coming from? The reverse of photosynthesis, right? Breaking up the sugars is when you got CO2 and water vapor. A lot of kids forget that water vapor is in your breath. So... By blowing it up and letting it go, it's child's play, but you get to teach with it, so. <gasps> Let's do the healing first. So now we learn, if this was roughly half and half, we want to have more breath, because the key is I want this to be buoyant. I want it to be perfectly buoyant. So think of the kids playing with that, right? Start finding stuff to weigh it down tape or tie it off or something. I'm glad we have a low room because I was doing this at Moscone Center the other day. I didn't lose a single balloon. I took it. So half and half doesn't work. We want to add more breath. And see what you have to do is take into consideration the size of the balloon. Because these are the good 12, if you can find 14 inch balloons you're in. The mass of the nipples in that on this balloon is a lot better than the cheap ones that came with the tank. So don't rely on the balloons that come with the tank if you ever do this. 
So we've got helium in here. We want more.